Welcome, Irish fans, to the official UND.com Notre Dame football blue gold post game show. I'm Jack Nolan coming to you from our FIDM studios. We have a lot for you after a rather entertaining blue gold game on a brilliant sunny but cold day at Notre Dame Stadium. We want to start right where today really started in the locker room where Coach Kelly addressed his team before the game. Alright guys, listen up. When we get out there, we're going to have a, a moment of silence uh, for the Boston Marathon uh, victims. And uh, helmet in the left hand, put your hand over your heart, uh, and that will be a moment of silence. Um, NBC is going to do some, some pregame stuff. So when we get out there, um, we'll, we'll go to the moment of silence, and, uh, and then we'll have some time to loosen up. We'll start the balls on the 30. Uh, you know, and we'll start, uh, obviously, uh, we'll go left to right. So we'll go left to right um, and begin the scrimmage that way. Okay, pay attention in ST. Make sure we got the right people on the field. Um, when you go out, you represent Notre Dame, whether it's a game that counts on the schedule or not. Every time you go out there, you do it the best. There is no halfway. As I said, you compete, but you represent Notre Dame. Pay attention on the sidelines. Okay, stay involved, cheer for your teammates. This is an opportunity for us to finish off the spring. All the hard work, let's do this together as a team. Let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And it is not temptation, but deliver us from evil. Our Lady, Queen of Victory. Pray for us. Let's go, man. Uh, UND.com's exclusive coverage of both Coach Kelly's pregame speech and the pregame prayer in the Notre Dame locker room. Now, this show is going to be very interactive as we want to share uh, some of your thoughts from social media and Facebook. And in fact, we already have a tweet uh, from one of the more humorous uh, Twitter accounts. It goes by the name of uh, Father Soren. The sun is gold and my fingers are blue. Must be the spring game in northern Indiana. Father could be worse. Could have been snowing today. Now you can vote right now for both player of the game, MVP and player of the game. So first we're going to show you uh, the nominees for play of the game. Ken McDaniel, spectacular one-handed catch. George Atkinson, the third, big 17-yard rush. Carlo Calabrese with the hit of the game. Council and Swanky combined for a safety in the second quarter. Ironically, they didn't actually get any points in the scoring system for the blue gold game, but a big play on the Lex. Now the touchdown pass from freshman quarterback Malik Zaire to CJ Procise. It was the long TD pass, the only TD pass of the game, and of course Something tells me this last play may get the most votes. Lewis Nix with the two-point conversion on the quarterback. That's right, quarterback draw. You can also vote for the MVP of the game. Here are the nominees. George Atkinson the third, Cam McDaniel, Tyler Stockton, Troy Nicholas, Matthias Farley, and Lewis Nix. Now, there were a lot of highlights in this game, and we're going to begin uh, in the first quarter uh, of today's contest by showing you uh, some of the big plays. Took a while for things to get going, but uh, coming up here on the third possession of the game, we started to have some highlights. Tommy Reese in the game. TJ Jones, who everybody thinks is ready for a breakout year, makes the nice patch right at midfield on a well-thrown football by Tommy Reese. Tommy Reese has had a good spring. A few plays later, Reese to Cam McDaniel. Look at that catch by the running back out of Texas, and he takes it deep into blue territory. Now, we're going to see another play or another shot of that play right there. Young man's got great heart and clearly great hands. I, I, I kind of think he's a little like Robbie Toma, uh, a guy that people doubt, but a guy who's going to make plays when he gets on the field. Tommy says, hey, if everybody caught my passes that way, I would never have an incompletion. George Ashton's in the third, running up the middle for a six-yard gain there. He was able to pick up a lot of tough yards in this contest. Now, Andrew Hendricks saw some action today and looked very good at times. There the swing pass out to Daniel Smith with a nice run down the sideline. 
And you know that uh, Coach Kelly's not going to show that much in the blue goal game, but he'll show a little. Chris Brown, tremendous speed on the reverse for a big game. And Everett Golson, you saw in the post-game interviews, not his best game, but he made some plays. And here he hooks up again. T.J. Jones going to be his go-to receiver. Those are the highlights from the first quarter. And as many of you may know, Dan Hicks made his debut as the NBC Notre Dame play-by-play -play guy. So we're going to let Dan Hicks and his very talented analyst partner, Mike Mayock, take you the rest of the way through the highlights of today's 84th annual Blue Gold Game. I, I just think it makes a ton of sense for Manti to go to Minnesota. And as you saw, look there, Kyle Rudolph and George Atkinson flashing a little bit of that speed for the first down <laughs> up across midfield. 15 with world-class speed. When he comes downhill like that, now drop your pad level and run through people. And the fact that he has uh, gained, what, seven, eight pounds? He says, I ran the fastest 100 meters last year that I've ever run, 10-3-4. Shaking off yet another injury. Boy, is he been bit by the injury. Wide ball. open. As Reese rolls and it's complete to Troy Nicholas, who shows some of those uh, pass catching abilities. And he, yes, he's a very good blocker. He's going to come down and get to the corner. Nicholas at 6'7, 260, though, has pretty good speed. And he's the kind of guy because of that frame, he's going to be a bear outside the numbers and in the red zone because you can throw it up and he'll go get it. Here at Notre Dame, or oh wow, oh, is that oh. a hit? Atkinson carries you the could hear down. that up here. Atkinson, I guess, did lower the pad level quite enough on that one. Poor Carl Calabrese, baby. Oh, Calabrese. wow, is that a hit? Calibrating perfectly. Well, 44. There's dropping the pad level, and if there's ever an abject lesson. Involved for a player, it's right there. Not to change it. Defense got out. No game track. But there was a right down the middle is Golson and right into the arms of Matthias Farley. Atkinson broke the route off. Anticipating the route to continue inside. He just hooked it up. He threw it inside. Easy interception for Farley. Matthias Farley, big part of the Notre Dame defensive success last year with a pick. The Notre Dame faithful want to see. Uh oh, safety. Kelly Resign and back in the end zone, brought down by Kona Schwenke. Is you get penetration on defense in a short yardage or goal line situation? Wow, the center, number 51, Bruce Hagee gets jacked. Defense making a play, and the blue is up, 25-19. Notre Dame and NBC Sports, a relationship that will continue at the end of it for a total of 35 oh. years. Nice attention throw there, Troy Nicholas. Brought down by Josh. Necessary to carry it out. Six foot seven, 260. Watch where this ball is. There's not a defensive back in the country that can make that play. That was Eshak Williams, the linebacker, following. And, and by the way, a little push off, not called, but Nicholas showing veteran. Okay. Bringing down a guy. Six feet seven. So Golson finding a little rhythm here after a shaky start. Tavares Daniels as a flag comes in. Matthias Farley on the coverage. He doesn't have this arm. Now watch the beat set. He sees it. Now rip it. When he rips it, it's really good. Yeah, that was Atkinson over there picking up the penalty. Lewis four. Couple of sacks last year for Day. Zaire steps up, delivers an interception. <laughs> That is Joe Schmidt, the walk-on, who picks it up. Watch the eyes here of Zaire. I mean, we can all read it. He doesn't come off that receiver. That's a high school throw right there. That's when you drop back, you eyeball one guy, and regardless of anything else happening on the football field, you throw it. And Schmidt's going, are you kidding me? You're going to take me to the football like that? And, and that's just the beginning of the education of a talented freshman. And, and that's just the beginning of the education of a talented freshman. So a nice gift for the walk on Schmidt on first and 20. Hendricks comes running out. And out of bounds at about the 27 yard line. Eshak Williams running them out. You just see him out there. Calm down, relax. Here's Zaire out into the B 
your flats here. And by the way, since that pick, he's throwing the football a little better now. They did a, a play action, a play a go. He made a nice throw outside the numbers. And comes on how he did today. Well, he's going to have to be an important player for us. He's got to roll, and he's really got to make it work for us. And so, um, again, you know, you can see there Will Mahone, who's a freshman running back. You know, he's in the seam. He's got to catch balls like that. And I think Cam's going to be able to do those things, as well as Amir Kylo, who didn't play today. All those guys have got to be able to do that. And I think the next challenge for them, like in Alabama, is to get the same kind of quality depth. Here's Zaire going down the field for a touchdown to Procise. And look at Malik sprint up to congratulate Procise. <laughs> He knocked him down. Full exuberance. He knocked him down. He ran 4-5 and knocked him down. <laughs> now, Procise is on the outside. You've got a bust. Defensive back Jalen Brown got lost. And that could be a connection we see down the road here at Notre Dame. Well, how about Lewis Nix? Number one in on at shot, offense and here. Look, he's a shotgun and he's telling people where to line up. Look Irish at him. Look at him. <laughs> delivering a new offensive <laughs> formation no, for the Irish. Throwing. You're kidding me. Nix is in. <laughs> Keeper. Uh, put it in the playbook. Uh, quarterback draw. 350 pounds in chocolate thunder. Rambling downhill, baby. What in the world is going on here? Watch this. Look left, look right, tuck it. Who's going to tackle that? No one. Not me. <laughs> he says he's 305. He's probably 40, 45 pounds uh, over this. that. <laughs> but the guy that called the best nose guard in the country just might have put a new option in for Coach Kelly. Maybe he called that play. Or did Chuck Martin? I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> Whatever it was, Lewis Nixon put some more in for me. Everybody's doing what you're asking to do with the level you want. Then you can start to have a little bit of fun with it. Listen here. <laughs> Putting his hand on the, the back of his lineman going up the middle there. That was Connor Hanratty. Say, so lead the way, big Connor. Wow, a couple of big time highlights at the end of the game. I know the fans are going to love the two point conversion by Lewis Nix the third, but uh, for the Charlie Fessinger family, that last highlight was probably the highlight of the game. Now, you know, it doesn't matter where he is, but the gentleman who writes the inside the Irish blog on NBCSports.com, you know, he wouldn't miss this game, even though he's out of the country. So coming to you live now from Serbia, where he is working on another professional project is our own analyst, Keith Arnold, who uh, was able to watch the game. See, all you folks are wondering, you can't see Notre Dame football. You can see it anywhere in the world. And Keith, I want to open because we're going to get to uh, Coach Kelly's press conference here very, very quickly. But I do want to open with uh, your overall comments of what you saw today. You know, I think it's just what a difference a year makes. You know, a year ago, we had a four-man quarterback race. I think they were taking live hits. It was really a spring where people were wondering if the wheels were falling off. Aaron Lynch had just left. And today it, it felt like a love fest. It was, you know, laughing and joking. We've got Lewis Nix, you know, scoring touchdowns. Uh, everything was great. It was just another practice and a celebration of, you know, a lot of hard work. You know, I think it's important to point out for the fans. I know the fans would like to see a real game where the two teams are divided equally and they keep regular score. But Coach Kelly continues to emphasize, and he's right, they just don't have the depth right now to have a competitive game. And they don't want to risk guys for injuries either. But I know the real aficionados of the game can focus on some particular matchups and particular guys and just see if they've made a step here or there. So under that set of guidelines, did anybody stand out for you today? You know, I think it was interesting to see guys like Troy Nicholas uh, make two big catches both down the field. Um, you know, obviously, it's good to see uh, George Atkinson run. You know, you also see some of the limitations he has when he gets knocked around by Carlo Calabrese running up high. Um, you know, on the defensive side, Jared Grace made some nice plays. Uh, you saw Tyler Stockton come out of nowhere to, to you know, have a great game and at least show that there is some, you know, really strong depth in the front seven, you know, like we thought there would be. By the way, Keith, what time is it where you are? It is, let's see, 
Almost 10 o'clock p.m., so not too bad. All right, not too late, so, so stay right there because we're going to get back to you. But uh, the post-game press conference, folks, was uh, rather quick. Now, this is on tape, but here's what Coach Kelly had to say after the game. When you go through the spring game and, you know, try to protect players. Um, so we got out of that clean. Chris Watt didn't play. He had a, um, I guess he slept long on his neck and um, was a little bit sore, so... Uh, we kept him out, but nothing major there. So, you know, from that standpoint, uh, before we get into the game, uh, you know, no, no significant injuries, nothing that's going to hold us back. Um, you know, guys went out and competed today. Uh, it was a little difficult, some of the elements today with the wind. You know, again, we've only been out three times this, sh this, this spring with the conditions that we've had. Um, so we didn't punt it quite as well or field it quite as well, but uh, those are, uh, you know, acclimatization things relative to um, my evaluation. Um, you know, saw some good things. You know, we'll have to watch the film, really. It's, it's one of those things where I, I, I really can't get into anything in depth. You probably saw more than I did. I was trying to work on the sideline, talking to players. So, um, you know, again, from my perspective, I wanted to make sure that any time we get here at Notre Dame that our kids get a chance to get a feel of game-like situations. So, you know, coming out of the tunnel, halftime, um, making it, you know, given the opportunity to talk to the guys as a group and then going back out. So we accomplished all those things. So Question. was uh, the Lewis next two point conversion an example of Chuck Martin's brilliant call of playing? I think you would have to put it all on Chuck. You know, uh, Chuck will have to answer the questions regarding Lou. Um, Lou, I lost the bet to Lou Nix. <laughs> so um, we had a bet, I lost it, and uh, the wager was that. If, um, if I lost the bet that I would have to put together an offensive play for him. And so I paid off my wager. And, and what exactly did you do, though? I mean, what did you? Lou and I had a personal bet on uh, some academics. Okay. And um, he, uh, he, uh, he surprised me. And so I, uh, I paid up. And uh, he said, I said, what do you want? And I figured he'd want something. But he came up, I want to score a touchdown in the spring game. As you know, we had a hard time scoring touchdowns in the spring game, and I didn't think that was going to come to reality. We tried uh, a couple of times uh, right before the half. We had an opportunity, and uh, we couldn't get the ball close enough. Uh, we had to settle some field goals. So, you know, when Malik hit it, we changed the play to a two-point play, and uh, we're able to get that one off. And if you had won the bet, you would have gotten? Uh, I would have gotten Lewis Nix to play for 67 plays at minimum every game. So um, he, uh, he's just a great personality, and the guy's got a, a kick out of it. I thought it was a, a good way to finish up the spring. How do you think Ronnie Stanley did stepping in playing guards? I like the way he competed. I'll have to, you know, again, um, make certain that I, I don't say too much about it. But what I did like is, is going in at guard, you know, and having that flexibility to play. He just played tackle most of the time. So the guard and tackle combination uh, has been good for us. And, and I, I think he competed pretty well. Brian, just at first glance, the offense not having scored a touchdown to the end there. Any initial thoughts on what you saw out there, why things maybe didn't go smoothly on that side? Yeah, I know. It's 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 really, you know, you're not game planning. You, you know, you're trying to stay away from doing some things. Um, so it's not really an indication. I, I think if there's any concern, not concerns, if there's anything that I would like to do better is, is to make certain that, you know, we don't fall back into um, some of the mistakes we made last year. And, and I thought we, we at times, we, we fell back into some of the mistakes we made last year offensively. Uh, look, I think today, spring game, I, I don't know if we went 13 games and had you know, third and longs like we did today. I mean, we had some third and 20s and 30s. That can't happen. And so uh, I'm not happy about that. But by and large, you know, a lot of them are correctable. Brian, you lost two running backs to graduation. Could you talk about how Atkinson and McDaniel played today, in your opinion? I thought they played you know, and competed. Um, you know, George, uh, you can see, is, is a big physical kid. I mean, he, he ran hard. Uh, he's, he's got, obviously, some, uh, some speed. We've seen that. Uh, we, we just got to get his pads down a little bit. Carlo reminded him 
uh, that he should run a little bit lower at times, and I thought that was a great teaching point for him. You know, Cam made a great catch coming out of the backfield uh, on a third down situation. I thought he ran the ball effectively. So, you know, those are two really good backs for us. And, uh, and I think Will, Will uh, made a nice catch on a seam throw that um, he's got to make. I thought that was, you know, uh, positive for him and just got to continue to develop. And you talked about not regressing in terms of mistakes. We obviously don't see nearly as much as you do, but your impressions on the spring Everett had and the kind of growth he had. He had a good spring, you know, uh, overall. Really liked his development in the spring, uh, and you know, one practice or one game, you know, format is is not going to take away from the kind of spring he had. But I think it's a good reminder for him. He's still learning, and uh, he'll get be better because of it. Right to your right, uh, I know you were only outside a few times, but the punting game, from what you saw during the spring, was it as inconsistent as it was today? Well, you know, Kyle, you know, Kyle's moving into that position and the reality of it is we got to continue to work with them, um, you know, and I think the wind obviously and being outdoors is, is going to be uh, part of our consideration, but we got to get better there. There's no question. You know, TJ lost the ball as well. Um, I'd like to uh, leave the spring feeling a little bit better about it, but we got a lot of work to do there. Coach, with so many options at linebacker, inside and outside, what's going to separate the core of guys between now and, and August? Um, I don't know that there's going to be a separation. I think they're all going to play. You know, I think they're all going to play significant roles. Um, you know, I thought Jared did a nice job today, uh, Carlo, and, and then when Danny Fox is in there, you know, those are the three guys that, you know, obviously are going to get a lot of the work uh, inside. You know, Joey Schmidt had a nice interception. You know, Kendall's running around out there. He's very active. But those three guys are going to get a lot of the work. Will the rest, I mean, how will the rest fit in? How can you see the rest fitting in right now? Oh, I think they're all fit in. I, I think there's just, you know, there's not going to be enough reps for everybody. But we'll have very good depth at that position. If we lose a guy, they're going to step in and, and do a nice job for us. So. You know, you go through 13 games, you never really have them all 100%. You know, you're going to lose a guy here or there. And uh, we were fortunate last year we didn't lose Manti for any games. But um, all those guys will be prepared and, and play championship football. Brian, what would you like about CJ this spring is he maybe surprise you guys with what he might be able to give you in the fall? Um, I, you know, he's just, you know, a very athletic kid. Um, he, he didn't fight the ball. You know, it seemed to come fairly natural. But, you know, he's very raw. You know, he's got a lot of work to do, but um, we feel very confident that if we stick with him and continue to work with him, that, that we, can, um, we can see a finished product as we move through the season. I don't think it's going to be, boom, come Temple, he's, he's where we want him to be. But he's, he's got a lot of really um, high-end traits in terms of speed and size. And, uh, you know, he's got to run better routes. You know, he's, he's got to track the ball consistently. But I, I'd rather work with a guy like that um, that has those, those traits and, and just know that he's work in progress. Brian, red zone offense today down the middle. Red zone offense today still didn't get in the end zone. Have, have you seen the progression that you've maybe wanted to see this spring in that area? Well, we really didn't have a red zone offense today. You know, we just ran plays. So, you know, there was nothing that, that we said, okay, when we get into this area, we, we were just running plays. Sometimes we were just trying to get that clock running. So, um, there, you know, I would not evaluate this, this game and, and look at issues in the red zone. We spent uh, a lot of time in situational red zone um, during the spring practices and didn't call any of those plays today. Brian, up front. Small picture with Everett, his biggest jump this spring was what? And then big picture, what do you need from these guys over the next three months when you're not able to be hands-on with them until yeah. August? Well, Everett's knowledge base of the offense and, and the things that he needs to use to run the offense efficiently, uh, he's got all that down. He probably has a little bit too much knowledge, and we've got to pull back some of those things. You know, He's got so much going on in his head. He wants to do too much. Uh, it took him away from some progression reads today that he didn't make those mistakes last year as a freshman. So, you know, it, it, it's a great – we got a lot to teach off it, and it's going to be very positive for Everett. Um, and the second question was – What was the next three months? Yeah. Yeah, and it's interesting. I, I brought that up to the team is that, you know, uh, you know, we'll meet with the team Monday night, and we, 
we, we turn them over to Coach Longo. He'll go um, and take the team over the next two weeks uh, to a segment that we use. Now that we've got our base down, we go to speed school. So our kids will, will focus on some speed development for two weeks. Uh, that'll take us through our exams. Uh, they're in an active rest period. Uh, and then we work hard at you know, that, that, that coat of armor, that strength that, that prevents injuries. And then uh, middle of June, we'll begin seven on sevens and, you know, one on ones. And those guys are going to have to take a jump. And that's where you develop your leaders. That, that's when those guys take over. Last year's team did a great job during the summer, and they're going to they're gonna be challenged to do the same. Brian, right here in front. Just a, a follow up on the quarterback situation. Between now and August 31st, could there be something that would change the pecking order, if you will, of what we saw today, one through four? Or do you feel pretty solid with it? No, the there won't be any changes until we get to camp, if there is any changes at all. So, you know, it would have to be coaches' eyes on them, you know, in terms of um, if there were going to be any changes. Coach, at the end of last spring, you mentioned that you felt good going into the season because your strength was on both sides of the line. Feel the same way this year that the yeah, I feel pretty good been. about that. Yeah, no question. I think, you know, uh, if the, if you know Chris Watt wasn't in there today, you know, uh, I think we'd get a little bit more of a sense. But um, I think up front we're we're pretty good on both sides of the ball. So yes, I, I feel pretty good about that. Co Coach, at the beginning of spring, you talked about developing an identity. Did you see anything developing out of the spring so far? Yeah, I think it's a, a, a very confident group of guys. You know, they've got a lot of confidence in themselves. They believe that they're going to be successful. Um, so I, I would say that the identity of this group right now is that um, uh, they're, they're a confident group. Now, we're going to have some tough times, and we'll see how we bounce back from those. And the, the, that's really the measure, right? You know, everybody's good when they're 0-0. Um, but I like their confidence. And, and with that, Tom, it's important to know that um, they haven't slacked off from the little things. So they've combined both those things, which gives me a comfort level that they understand what it takes to be successful. Thank you. Coach Kelly's press conference right after today's Blue Gold game. Now, we do want to remind you, this was on tape, but in the fall, we will always have, barring that occasional technical difficulty, Coach Kelly's press conference live for you right after every Notre Dame football game. Now, one of the uh, key positions for any football team is the running back position, and we actually have a tweet here from Jason Clark. Nice to see Cam McDaniel still looks like a workhorse. And, and we want to bring uh, Keith Arnold back in all the way from Serbia. And Keith, certainly th that is a key situation for this football team as they head into to the fall, getting a couple of uh, dependable running backs up and running today. Now, Coach uh, Kelly always says he likes to have balance in his play calling. Uh, and I know it's not his play calling anymore, but there were 42 runs called today. 41 passes. I think Coach Kelly would prefer that be more 60-40. But did you see any guys look like they can be the workhorses to replace uh, Sierra Wood and Theo Riddick, who uh, have uh, moved on to the next level? Yeah, I think what you're going to see here is, is that with Sierra Wood leaving and Theo Riddick gone, it's, it's, those two are the guys. I mean, I don't think we've ever seen Brian Kelly rely on a young player, freshman coming right into school this summer. So, you know, these are the guys they have, and I think these are the guys they think can win. Um, Cam McDaniel's a really interesting kid. He's a great running back. He's a guy that I think most people probably um, overlook only because, you know, he's, he's slight in stature. You know, he's a white guy. To be honest, he's getting compared to Danny Wood too many times to even count. Uh, I had a great conversation with him down in Miami where he was really confident, um, knew that his time was coming. And, you know, it, it's something that I think we saw this spring. Now, would you agree, Keith, and I, I said this at the top of our show, he's a little like Robbie Toma in my mind, a guy that maybe doesn't have spectacular numbers physically, but he's a guy that just makes plays, and the more you doubt him, the better he plays. Yeah, I mean, remember, this is a guy who was voted the player of the year in Dallas, Texas, as a high school senior, so he's, he's not some fly-by-night, you know, Rudy story. He, he's a, he was a legit high school football player that I think probably thrives a lot on on, on people thinking he might not be able to do it. Now, this team is building more and more depth. One of their themes is next man in. That's usually applied to a guy who goes out because of injury. But I think it may also apply to the natural attrition that you get from graduation. Do you see that working here, even though they're 
There is nobody who's had workhorse numbers running the football at the collegiate level yet. Do you expect to see a couple of guys or more emerge as dependable playmaking running backs early in this next season? Yeah, you know, that was the question that I asked on the live blog today is, is do you think someone can run for 1,000 yards? Uh, I think people maybe thought that would happen last year. But, you know, this offensive staff knows very much what they like to get out of each running back. I think last year they knew that Theo Riddick would be a guy who could catch the ball, but he also could run it in between the tackles. And I, and I think you see this staff putting the players in a position uh, where they can best play. So I don't think there is a workhorse uh, back on this roster. I don't think George Atkinson is that guy yet. I think everyone would like him to be him because he's got, you know, world-class speed. And he's a 215-pound guy. But... You know, they're going to continue to just get the offense into the right looks and take advantage of the personnel they have. All right, Key, if you will, uh, stand by over there in Serbia. We're going to take a break right now, but if you watch some of our promos this week, we promised you some surprise special guests. Well, we'll have our first right after this timeout. We love seeing you at Bank of America. But we know you want to be able to bank wherever you are. Bank of America Mobile Banking lets you bank on your schedule. Now you can securely deposit checks you get right away with your smartphone camera. Watch this. It doesn't get more convenient than that. See? Success. It's amazing. Check balances, pay bills. And much, much more. Right here. Bank on your schedule. And deposit checks on the go. Download the Bank of America mobile banking app today. I need to get back to work. Watching sports on Xfinity from Comcast is like having a front row seat to the biggest moments. With NFL Red Zone, ESPN Goal Line, and the Watch ESPN app, you're right there for all the action. This is the Xfinity Sports Experience. This is awesome. You won't get all this with satellite or U-verse. Sign up for Xfinity TV and internet, just $79.99 a month for six months, with a sports entertainment package included for three months. Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. Call 1-800-XFINITY today. Are you a fan of Demoisier? Um, Demoisier who? Okay, you can't get by on just your looks forever. Okay. You just ordered a premium roast coffee and a savory sausage McMuffin for only a dollar each off McDonald's dollar menu at breakfast. So you know you're smart. He has a certain je ne sais quoi, you know? Oh, tu vois français? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All the time. The simple joy of being smart. How do you make summer feel 90 days longer? Get to the Mazda Summer Drive. Because you can save big on a 2012 Mazda 3 with no payments for 90 days and 0% APR for 60 months. So get our hottest deal of the summer on the 40 MPG Highway Mazda 3 with Skyactiv technology. 0% APR for 60 months, no payments for 90 days. Only at the Mazda Summer Drive. And only for a limited time. Are you a fan of Demoisier? Um, Demoisier who? Okay, you can't get by on just your looks forever. Okay. You just ordered a premium roast coffee and a savory sausage McMuffin for only a dollar each off McDonald's dollar menu at breakfast. So you know you're smart. He has a certain je ne sais quoi, you know? No, tu vois français. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All the time. The simple joy of being smart. Welcome home. Thank you. At Meyer, you'll find fresh foods at refreshingly low prices, which means Janet here doesn't have to employ the usual produce selection techniques. She doesn't do the thump, the squeeze, or the sniff. Nope, Janet has her own way of selecting her fruits and veggies, the grab and go. Because no one offers more farm fresh foods delivered daily at low Meyer prices. Experience the savings, experience the difference. Meyer. I'm very happy I made the switch. It's easy. They're great. As I go out, 
being nervous about going out into the world. You switch because... For what you get and what, what they give back. Of the people. It just be another thing that I know is there for me all the time. It's a no-brainer. It's about family. It's about values. It's about doing things the right way. And that's why I'm sticking with it. You just get sucked in. And it's great. We're there. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union. Come home. You know you're going to get the best when you go to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union. And we are back here on the Blue Gold Game post-game show. Irv Smith, you got to remember this guy. I can't believe you've been retired from the NFL for 12 years, eight-year NFL career. Yes, sir. It's, 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 it flew by. I tell you what, it seems like just yesterday it was my freshman year here at Notre Dame. And it seems like just yesterday that he carried a couple of Indiana defenders 20 yards into the end zone, one of your iconic plays here as a Notre Dame tight end. And, and you saw a guy today, I think, and we're going to – uh, call up a tweet here. I know I've always liked Troy Nicholas's potential. It keeps coming up. I know you do. And we have a tweet here from Candace4ND. Nicholas is going to be one of my favorites this year. I think he has the potential to be a star. But what do you see? You know what it, what it means and what you need to have to play well at this level and the next level. Well, actually, when I saw him last year, and of course, uh, Tyler Eifert is a stud. But when I saw him last year playing next to Tyler Eifert, I said to myself, that kind of seemed, it reminded me of when I was here with Derrick Brown. You know, you've got two guys that could potentially be starters, and he is definitely a stud. I'm excited to see his performance this year, and definitely looking forward to seeing him play in the NFL down the road. I was talking to one coach, and he said, well, you know, with Eifert, you kind of had a wide receiver at tight end. Now you've got like an offensive lineman at tight end. Well, you know, he, he's very versatile. He runs. Uh, of course, he catches. Uh, he can he can run guys over. He's a, a big force. I think when you put him out there, uh, the, the defense doesn't have a clue what he's going to do. He might block you because he's a big guy, but he also might run by, right by you and make some good plays. Now, there's a lot of things that a tight end can do, but when you have a tight end who can both pancake you, but he's also got good hands and can really move, how difficult is that guy to defend? Well, you know, he, he's a game changer. I mean, that's what Tyler Eifert was. I mean, Tyler Eifert, I mean, he really worked hard, I believe, uh, this last year on his blocking, it, it, you know, to be an NFL caliber blocker. But he's always been a great tight end as far as catching the football. And the guy that we have this year, I mean, I think he's, you know, I think he's already established himself. At best, he's a big body. He can run, he can catch, and I think he's going to be a, a great force to help us get back to the glory days this year. Now, we can't make him an All-American yet because he still has to step up and do it. He's got great potential. So what are the next steps for him? As you watched him today and as he walked by you, what things does he need to do to become an elite tight end? Well, you know, I think the tight end position is a, is a leadership position. I think as long as he continues to develop the skills, um, they have great uh, offensive coaches, uh, allow the coaches to coach him to make sure that he's a, a very proficient blocker along with being a receiver, not being one, you know, one dimensional. As long as he can do both things, uh, run, catch, make the blocks, he'll be just fine. Okay, Irv, thank you so much for stopping by. My you like our fancy studios? I love it. It's beautiful. Don't tell anybody the secret. Yes, sir. It, Good to be here. Thank you, my it, man. It's a virtual set, folks. We are so sophisticated here. All right. He's not our only special guest. And we'll be back with our next special guest right after this timeout. Three, two, one. It's hard to call it radio when it's this out of the box. Listen to that. <laughs> Man, you know just what to say. You might be a redneck. Yeah. Fox News alert on several dramatic new developments. Frank Sinatra. You're a delightful audience. Let's go to Margaritaville. To the 10, to the 5. Touchdown. This is Satellite Radio. Welcome to Sirius XM. The HTC Evo 4G LTE from Sprint is now available in white. Evo lets you hear what you love with Beats Audio and capture what you love with both video and stills. It's everything you love about Evo in white. Available only at Sprint stores and Sprint.com. We love seeing you at Bank of America. But we know you want to be able to bank wherever you are. Bank of America Mobile Banking lets you bank on your schedule. Now you can securely deposit checks you get right away with your smartphone camera. Watch this. It doesn't get more convenient than that. See? Success. It's amazing. Check balances, pay bills. And much, much more. Right here. Bank on your schedule and deposit checks on the go. Download the Bank of America mobile banking app today. I need to get back to work.
Watching sports on Xfinity from Comcast is like having a front row seat to the biggest moments. With NFL Red Zone, ESPN Goal Line, and the Watch ESPN app, you're right there for all the action. This is the Xfinity Sports Experience. This is awesome. You won't get all this with satellite or U-verse. Sign up for Xfinity TV and internet, just $79.99 a month for six months with a sports entertainment package included for three months. Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. Call 1-800-XFINITY today. Huh. Are you a fan of Demoisier? Um. Demoisier who? Okay, you can't get by on just your looks forever. Okay. You just ordered a premium roast coffee and a savory sausage McMuffin for only a dollar each off McDonald's dollar menu at breakfast. So you know you're smart. He has a certain je ne sais quoi, you know? No, to pas français. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All the time. The simple joy of being smart. Folks, don't forget you can participate by voting at und.com backslash social. There is the play or the plays of the game nominees, all of those plays, which uh, we've already shown you and talked about. And you can also vote for the player of the game and a pretty good uh, collection of folks. Tyler Stockton had an outstanding game today. A couple of sacks and uh, two and a half tackles for losses in case you uh, might have missed that. Of course, the sacks weren't all that spectacular today because the quarterbacks were off limits, although one did get knocked to the ground. So uh, you didn't get the same roar normally, but they were still sacks. So. And right now, we do want to go back uh, to our NBC Sports blogger, Keith Arnold, who's over in Serbia, and he's starting to busily uh, work on his next game day summary blog. So, Keith, I know we got to let you focus on that. So, uh, just your closing comments. I know it's the blue gold game, and fans sometimes build it up to be too much. But for the players and the staff, it's very important the little things that may not show up. What did you see today that uh, really stands out? A little preview of what f folks are going to be able to read in your column later on tonight. Yeah, you know, I think the best part about spring games is, you know, what's real and what's a mirage. We see, you know, Ishak Williams has eight tackles. Um, does that mean it, there's going to be great things that next year? Uh, whereas Tyler Stockton has six and two sacks, and, you know, we might not hear from him next season. So I think the great part about games like this is it gives us an extended look and gives us something to talk about for the next few months. But if I had to say one final thing that, you know, what really wraps up this game to me it's just the overall health of the football program. I mean, it's been, it's probably been a decade be since, you know, we had a game where this really didn't matter. Nothing that we saw today is going to change our opinion on what this football team is going to be next year. And it's going to be a really good football team. So uh, today was just another day of work. Today felt more like a celebration of, you know, a lot of tough workouts in the winter. A lot of the things we saw during that strong and true documentary that I think gave us a really good look behind the scenes. And, you know, it's going to be, a, it's it's really the most drama-free uh, time we've had in a long time. It's something we should enjoy. So I know that Coach Kelly lost a bet to Lewis Nix. But any chance that we ever actually see Lewis Nix take a snap in a game? Man, I hope not. <laughs> um, I, I don't see, it. you know, it's. It's, I think we had the jumbo package in the first series of the USF game, and that was the last time we saw that when Jonas Gray fumbled and went back 98 yards. So uh, all, all in favor of seeing Louis Nix as many times as possible on a TV screen. He should get his own TV pilot. But as a quarterback, I think we're good to go. Exactly the answer I wanted to get. The fans loved it, but uh, that's why it's an exhibition and not the real thing. Keith, thank you so much from Serbia. Folks, don't go away. Another special guest is coming up right here on the 84th annual Blue Gold Game Post Game Show live on UND.com. How do you make summer feel 90 days longer? Get to the Mazda Summer Drive. Because you can save big on a 2012 Mazda 3 with no payments for 90 days and 0% APR for 60 months. So get our hottest deal of the summer on the 40 MPG Highway Mazda 3 with SkyActive technology. 0% APR for 60 months, no payments for 90 days. Only at the Mazda Summer Drive. And only for a limited time. Huh. Are you a fan of Demoisier? Um, Demoisier who? Okay, you can't get by on just your looks for him. Okay. You just ordered a premium roast coffee and a savory sausage McMuffin for only a dollar each off McDonald's dollar menu at breakfast. So you know you're smart. He has a certain je ne sais quoi, you know? Ooh, tu parles français. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. All the time. The simple joy of being smart. Welcome home. Thank you. At Meyer, you'll find fresh foods at refreshingly low prices, which means Janet here doesn't have to employ the usual produce selection techniques. She doesn't do the thump, the squeeze, or the sniff. Nope. Janet has her own way of selecting her fruits and veggies, the grab and go. Because no one offers more farm fresh foods delivered daily at low Meyer prices. Experience the savings, experience the difference. Meyer. All right, fans, our second special guest and guest analyst, a familiar face, maybe even more familiar or familiar again because you are on the front of the shirt this year, that? along with Joe Farrell, yeah. who's going to be part of your statue because he carried you off the field after the uh, 88 National uh, Championship winning game in the 89 Fiesta Bowl. You, of course, uh, a captain on that team, linebacker, All-American linebacker, and uh, we had some pretty intense linebacker play today. We're going to go to a tweet right now from uh, one of the fans uh, watching from one foot down. Carlo Calabrese just crushed GA3. That will learn a back, not the greatest uh, uh, grammar there, certainly teach a back to run straight up. What do you think of Carlo? No, I love Carlo. Uh, besides the fact that he's from New Jersey, I'm a New, Jer <laughs> New Jersey he guy is, myself. He is. But no, I've been a big fan of his since he's been here. And, uh, you know, they've had some great linebackers here. Obviously, Manti Teo is going to be a loss when he leaves. But, you know, between Dan Fox, Carlo Calabrese, Jared Grace, I don't know much about, but sounds like he's a very talented linebacker. Uh, I think they got three solid players. I think Carlo is a heck of a player. He's gotten better every year. Uh, he's intense. He makes big plays. When you hit people like that, uh, I mean, that sets the tone for the defense. So I'm looking forward to a big year for the linebacking core. And I think Carlo is going to be a very important part of that. And, I mean, he had to fight off a block. He's very agile right now. I mean, you really have to block him because he'll get around you. Well, he, he's strong. He's been strong yeah, at the point of attack for the last couple of years. Uh, he's got good feet. He's, uh, you know, he's played well in pass coverage today. Uh, you know, he gets up the field and he makes things happen. Uh, that's what you want from your linebackers. You want guys who can stop the run and can get from sideline to sideline. I think all the linebackers can. He's also, I mean, Carla, but we've, we've been showing some of the other guys out there, too, including Mr. Grace was on that last play. As you look at, as you watch the whole group and the athleticism of the linebackers today and the way they were making their reads and whatnot, what were your overall thoughts of, the, of them as a unit? Well, I think they have some depth to them, and uh, they're, they're athletic, they're big guys. Uh, they can stuff the run. They can they can you know go from sideline to sideline, and they can play the pass. Is any one player you know uh, of Manti Teo's caliber? No, but he's graduated. He's moved on. But as a unit, they're solid. Uh, not just the first two, three guys, but they probably go two, three guys after that that are deep. And uh, I love the defense. And it starts with the defensive line, a good linebacking core, and a defensive backfield that's more experienced than it was last year. And they were pretty good last year. You were part of the last truly dominant era of Notre Dame football, a five or six year period where there was so much talent that even times captains like you had to fight for playing time. As you look at this team as a whole, do you see that kind of depth and athleticism returning to the program? I, I do. I, I think it's taken a, a couple of years as it always does, but you know, you're not going to compete for a uh, you know, top spot in the country, a national championship, unless you have your starters every day competing against the second team guys and being pushed. So you know, if you recruit well and you develop the talent, you're always going to have tough competition. If you don't, uh, you're not, not usually going to have a very successful team. I see it happening last year. I definitely see it happening this year with the depth uh, on the defensive side of the ball. And uh, with the recruiting that's going on and the development of players, I think it's only going to get better. And then you'll see the consistency of, of the program uh, you know, continue on like it was the last two years. Always a pleasure, my okay, friend. Jack, thank you. One of my great memories is sharing a beverage with this guy in Scottsdale the night of the 89 Fiesta. We had a lot to celebrate that night. It was a great, yeah, we had a lot to celebrate. No question about that. We'll be back with more on the official Notre Dame football Blue Gold Game post game show here on UND.com right after this. I'm very happy I made the switch. It's easy. They're great. As I go out, being nervous about going out into the world. You switch because. For what you get and what, what they give back. Of the people. It just be another thing that I know is there for me all the time. It's a no brainer. It's about family. It's about values. It's about doing things the right way. And that's why I'm sticking with it. You just get sucked in and it's great. We're there. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union. Come home. You know you're going to get the best when you go to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union. Three, two, one. 
it's hard to call it radio when it's this out of the box. Listen to that. <laughs> Man, you know just what to say. You might be a redneck. Yeah. Fox News alert on several dramatic new developments. Frank Sinatra. You're a delightful audience. Let's go to Margaritaville. To the 10, to the 5. Touchdown. This is Satellite Radio. Welcome to Sirius XM. The HTC Evo 4G LTE from Sprint is now available in white. Evo lets you hear what you love with Beats Audio and capture what you love with both video and stills. It's everything you love about Evo in white. Available only at Sprint Stores and Sprint.com. We love seeing you at Bank of America. But we know you want to be able to bank wherever you are. Bank of America Mobile Banking lets you bank on your schedule. Now you can securely deposit checks you get right away with your smartphone camera. Watch this. It doesn't get more convenient than that. See? Success. It's amazing. Check balances, pay bills. And much, much more. Right here. Bank on your schedule and deposit checks on the go. Download the Bank of America Mobile Banking app today. I need to get back to work. Watching sports on Xfinity from Comcast is like having a front row seat to the biggest moments. With NFL Red Zone, ESPN Goal Line, and the Watch ESPN app, you're right there for all the action. This is the Xfinity Sports Experience. This is awesome. You won't get all this with satellite or U-verse. Sign up for Xfinity TV and internet, just $79.99 a month for six months, with a sports entertainment package included for three months. Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. Call 1-800-XFINITY today. Are you a fan of Demoisier? Um... Demoisier who? Okay, you can't get by on just your looks forever. Okay. You just ordered a premium roast coffee and a savory sausage McMuffin for only a dollar each off McDonald's dollar menu at breakfast. So you know you're smart. He has a certain je ne sais quoi, you know? Ooh, tu quoi français? Yeah. Oh yeah. All the time. The simple joy of being smart. As Irish fans know, the media every year votes for a player of the game. Well, we decided we would let you vote for a fan player and play of the game. And as you might expect, usually in every blue gold game, there is a certain iconic play. Well, Lewis Nix III, Irish chocolate, is both the player of the game and was involved in the play of the game in the voting on und.com backslash social. You know the play. I mean, th th this is just terrific. Look at him back there at quarterback. He's setting his receivers. He's reading the coverages. He's getting his guys ready. And, of course, look at the defense. They're all like, no, I don't think so. And he gets in for the two-point conversion. Uh, Nick's winning a bet. It was an academic bet uh, with Coach Kelly. Coach Kelly uh, challenging Lewis Nix to uh, achieve uh, something on the academic side, which apparently he exceeded dramatically and uh, earning a spot to carry the ball. He's been talking about carrying the ball for a long time, but I almost kind of wanted him to throw it. This is almost too easy, folks. Shades of uh, the refrigerator many, many years ago, but Lewis Nix having a little fun. A good blue-gold game, a lot of work done, and it wraps up spring practice 2013 for the Fighting Irish, and that will also wrap up our show. Lots of folks involved in getting this show uh, on the air, and we also got a bunch of tweets, so we're going to go to a couple of more tweets here from uh, the many that we got and uh, then examined, and so we're going to uh, dial them up here on the 2013 Blue Goal Game post-game show. There it is. There it is. Ha! Big Lou makes my life. Watching the Blue Gold Game was worth it just to see that. It's the highlight. And there's a guy we know rather well. He used to work with us. That Knicks two-point conversion was like the magical ending to a Disney movie 
everyone can go home happy now and there's no tears either. So I guess that's the best way to end it. That will do it for the official UND.com Notre Dame football blue gold game post game show. We'll be back, of course, in the fall with the best coverage of the entire Notre Dame football season, including that season opener against Temple at Notre Dame Stadium. For the many people who worked very hard to get this show on the air, I'm Jack Nolan. Good afternoon and go Irish.